Hey, how's it going guys? It's Zed from me and today I'm going to show you how to turn your tail lights from this to this. That's right, going from regular amber turn signals to the sequentials, all for under $5. So recently I came across this video of a product which actually allows your amber turn signals to kind of get this sequential looking effect. As you can see here on the right side, I've already installed my version of the sequential tail lights. Whereas on this side is the side that I'm going to show you guys how to do it. And it's actually really easy. And uh, what I noticed with the harness that's actually sold in order to get this effect uh, I looked at it and I said, wait a second, this looks a little something too easy to do. I'm not sure why it costs $130. Perhaps uh, it's the connectors that they use to make it plug and play, to make it for everybody um, to have easy access to it, just plug and play. Um, whereas for me, I really didn't see how it was really worth $130. So I do have a little bit of a background in terms of electronics. Um, and I thought to myself, wow, this should actually be really simple to do with a simple uh, any, any triple five timer relay. And so usually how these things work is basically when they get power, instead of sending that electricity straight to the output right away, you can actually control the delay that it has. And that's essentially what the harness does for you. Um, if you look at the harness, it basically is a timer relay. So there's really nothing special about it. This particular piece, let me show you guys, only cost me $5 to get. So the piece that's responsible, that's actually really cheap, is this piece right here. What this is, is basically a timer delay relay where one side gets power and you can adjust with this part right here how long it takes before the output actually gets power. And so, you know, when I came across this, I was like, that's basically what that entire harness was. So. I wanted to try for myself whether or not I could actually uh, make this sequential looking uh, LED tail light without the need of that actual harness. And it turns out um, I actually can. So let me show you guys how I have been able to actually make it happen. And for that, I have to show you a little bit more about this actual relay. So what I'm gonna do is grab my phone and uh, my phone should be a little bit better in terms of focusing in on the uh, little pieces of electronics um, that does the trickery here. So just hold on a second. This is the actual um, timer relay, and uh, this is the chip that it's based off of. I believe it's the NE555. Essentially what happens is on this side, there is the positive and the negative, and this will get power to the outer tail lights. When the outer tail lights gets power for the amber turn signals, this will, uh, there will be a, an LED that actually turns on right here where my finger is. It'll turn red. And then when the output is ready, the blue will come on right over here. So this little potentiometer here allows you to adjust how long of a delay um, between input and output. On this side is the output. The output, as you see in the middle here, is the common, which is the positive. And then CK means that once it trips, it'll get power. CB on the bottom here is that it has power until it trips. So common goes to CB until it trips and gives power to CK. In our case here, we'll be using the CK obviously um, so that there is a small delay which actually will allow the uh, light to look like it's spreading outward. So our positive for the amber turn signal goes here, negative goes to the one next to it, and then one positive connecting here to the common and the CK will then actually go to the tail light. Now if this doesn't make a lot of sense to you, I suggest that you um, try and watch the video a little bit closely, maybe watch it a couple of times, maybe have someone who knows electronics explain it to you. This is actually very simple, so I really don't think it's, uh, unless, unless you really have zero clue and you don't have anyone to teach you how to do this or you don't have any soldering skills at all, it might be a good idea, I guess, to just buy the, relay, uh, buy the harness if you really want it. But for me, something cheap like this, two of these for less than $5, was definitely a good buy for me. Um, I bought this on eBay, by the way. It took like maybe a week or two to get here, which is why I, wa I wasn't able to put this um, particular video with the install of the LED tail lights. Um, so let me go and show you the actual process of how to hook this all up. All right, so to start, you're gonna open your trunk, just like before, get all this crap out of the way. Obviously, I still have all this stuff here from when I was doing the project earlier to see um, of a proof of concept. But basically, if I show you in here, 
Let's see if I can get my hands in there to open it up. I know this carpet right here is like always stuck, but basically all everything is done in here. And uh, you can kind of see the circuit board sitting right there. It's um, all taped up closed, so uh, there won't be any short circuiting or anything of that sort. But uh, let's do it to the other side over here. All right, so this is the wiring harness. This is the wiring harness that came with the uh, LED tail lights. This is um, the body side. And so what you're actually looking for is the two middle pins over here. One's brown, one's yellow. This yellow one is actually the one that is gonna ride all the way up to the inner tail light. The inner tail light is actually what will give the turn signal power. So this will be positive. The brown one is actually gonna be our negative. So all we have to do is splice into this. So let me just cut these open right now to show you what to do. Okay, so all we have to do is snip this yellow one. So this other yellow one, the one that's actually going to the inner tail light is not the one you want. You want the one that's coming from the inner tail light going to this outer harness. So we'll just snip this and we'll also snip this brown wire which is gonna be our ground. All right, so next step is to connect this which is coming from the inner tail light. I'm gonna connect this to VCC and then also run a wire from VCC to the common. This is gonna go to CK and these brown ones, both of these are gonna go to the ground on, um, on the input side of the relay. And that's actually it. So I'm just gonna wire it up for you guys so you can see. I'll try and explain a little bit more after it's done. I'm sure it'll be clear. Um, but this is actually a really easy job. So let me show you and uh, how to get it all done. So all I'm doing here is basically stripping some wire back. so that I can actually put it into the relay. And on the other side, it actually took me a couple of tries to figure out which one was actually the um, turn signal wires, but eventually I figured it out. So I had to do a little bit more soldering on that side than I wanted to because I actually had to fix some things that I messed up, which is fine, of course, um, because you guys will be able to see how to do it without any trouble. All right, so this is the relay. Hopefully you guys can see what's going on. This needs to go to VCC positive on this side, but I also have to run a wire from VCC to the common. So let me go grab a random piece of wire. And what we'll do is we'll connect this to this, run it into the VCC positive. Where is my screwdriver? Okay. Open this up. VCC positive. Tighten that down. Okay, then we're gonna take this other end, and of course this can be a little bit shorter, but I like leaving a little bit of extra wire. Maybe I'll cut it a little bit shorter. So maybe something like that. Strip it. Okay, and then this will go to common because essentially we want the power to go through from common to CK when the relay actually trips. Sometimes you want that to be a separate circuit, but in our case, we want it to be on the same circuit because we just want the power to basically pass through. Okay, so now this yellow goes to CK the, side, the output side. So once the relay trips, this will get power from common to CK, which is right here. We'll tighten that down. And all that's left to do 
is put the grounds, which is brown here, to the brown over here. And both of these just have to go into the ground of the input side, which is this guy right here. Tighten that down. Okay, now basically, I kind of want to see if it works. Um, so I'll take the remote for the for the car, and then press unlock, which should theoretically blink the blinkers. So let's see. Okay, so you can see here the red. It blinks when you do it, right? But it's not actually tripping the relay. So we just have to adjust this relay. I'm doing counterclockwise right now, like a couple of turns to see when it actually trips. So still nothing yet, we'll keep going. This relay actually goes from something really small, like one or 10 milliseconds all the way up to like 10 seconds. This is which is why the range is so big. I have to really find out uh, which way to turn this potentiometer so that it releases right away. So basically, what I want to do is find a way for it to basically, uh, once it's inputted, to let it go out. There we go. Okay. So as you can see now, we won't really have a delay because you can see the red and the blue blinking together, right? So we just have to turn this until it actually has some sort of a delay. Obviously, I want to match both sides, so um, I'll turn on the hazards and control the potentiometer until both relays click at the same time. So I'm gonna turn it clockwise. So it sounds like they're pretty in sync now. Both relays on both sides. Uh, that's basically it. It's trial and error and of course you actually get the opportunity to pick how long you want the delay to be. Um, of course I just kind of did by what it looks good by what looks good. Um, so for you you might want it a little bit shorter or might, might want it a little bit longer. That's up to you. So let me turn off the hazards. And essentially what I want to do now is just plug this back in and um, take a look at the taillights with the hazards on to make sure that they are actually blinking in sync. But the first thing that I kind of want to do is wrap this up in some sort of electrical tape and then stick it all back in, plug everything back in, and I'll show you guys what it looks like afterwards. All right, so let me show you guys the final product. Let me turn on the hazards. Uh, one thing that I did want to note is that you actually don't have to solder anything. I only had to solder because I um, I was looking for the amber turn signals on the other side. So um, I actually had to solder back wires that were originally didn't even need to be cut. Um, that's the only reason I need to solder. So you don't need any soldering skills for this project. Um, and this here is the final product. As you can see with the hazards, the inners blink first, then the outers, and uh, both sides are in sync with one another as far as I can tell. Um, that's basically it. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I know this is a very interesting DIY project. Could potentially save you over $100 if you go the route that I did. And it's actually not that difficult to um, actually execute. All you have to do is take two wires, cut them, and then make one extension that goes from the input to the output of the relay. And that's basically it. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave below. Thank you guys for watching. As always, if you like my videos, please subscribe. I'm Zep for me, and I'll see you guys in the next one.